Okay, the recording is in progress. So the ELSO December meeting of the ELSO Bronte Municipal Advisory Committee Council is uh, in order. And I'd like to start off by uh, taking um, roll. So uh, Tom Lang is here. Melinda McLean. Here. George Cleveland. Here. Tom Owens. Here. Here. Um, Mickey Norris. Okay, and uh, here. Uh, there Sorry. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't see Emily or uh, Shirley Rosenthal Winston, um, but uh, I believe we do have a quorum, so we can proceed. And uh, the first thing we should do is approval of the minutes for July fourteenth, August eleven, and September eighth. And is there any reason that we, uh, so I, I move to approve these minutes. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Tom Owens will second. And does anybody have any objection to approving the uh, minutes um, for those three meetings? All aye. Okay, it looks like we have five, five yes votes for approving the minutes. So we're good there. Um, what we'll do is next on the item, next on the agenda is the treasurer's report and we will get a report uh, in the next meeting uh, and you know, which James will um, provide. And um, so we'll go to our regular uh, presentations from law enforcement and fire. And so we can start off with Lieutenant Buford from the base station. Um, oh, good evening, everyone. Happy holidays. So uh, for the month of November, you guys actually had, or El Sobrani actually had 126 less calls for service with uh, 615 as compared to October's with 741. Uh, it's nothing really significant to report except for just be aware that during holiday seasons, thefts tend to go up. So make sure you're locking your doors, keeping everything locked down, be, be vigilant of what's left in vehicles. The only other thing is I had a complaint about Thrift Town and the trash and everything out there, but we have contacted Public Works and that area is on its list for cleanup. And with that, I'll open the door to the board first for questions. Okay, uh, I have no questions. Are there any other questions from board members? Uh, Mickey? Hi there. I was wondering if there's an update on that um, attack, if there have been any arrests on or anything regarding that attack on uh, the corner of Davila Way and, and La Honda Road. Was that a couple of months ago, ma'am? Yes. Uh, individuals yeah. are in custody. They are in custody. That's oh, great. That's good to hear. I saw the fam. I lived down the block from there and I saw the look like they were building a ramp for okay. You know, so hopefully their son is coming home, or I, I don't know if there's an update on his condition or anything. No, I, I don't have any update on his condition. I can tell you that there were arrests made regarding that incident. Great, thank you. Mickey, um, he is home. His wife just texted me today. This is Sona, but um, not not his normal self. You said he came home today? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so today. His wife just um, texted me and um, she's happy that he's home, but life will be different for them. Okay, I'm so so sorry to hear it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thanks for the question, Mickey, and for that update. Good news that there are suspects in custody. Any other questions from the board for Lieutenant Buford? If we don't have uh, further questions from the board, are there questions from the other attendees? Looking for raising of hands for Lieutenant Buford. Okay. Uh, 
Looks like there are no further questions for you, Lieutenant Buford. Many thanks for all that you and the Sheriff's Department do keeping us safe. And we certainly wish you and the Sheriff's, all the Sheriff's deputies and staff a really wonderful holiday season. And, and we the same, safe. likewise. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lieutenant Buford. So uh, we have uh, Officer Leviste from the Highway Patrol. Highway Patrol. Good evening, everybody. Um, first and foremost, I want to introduce uh, my partner this evening, uh, Officer Adam Lane, who is our uh, uh, public information officer. I'm going to give him a chance. I don't know if you have, uh, Tom, if you have to do something special to give him access to speak. Um, uh, but we have him on here. I want to give him a chance to introduce himself. No, he can just jump right in if he isn't muted. Hey guys, my name's Adam Lane. Uh, I'm with Officer Leviste at the Contra Costa office. I recently came into the public information officer role. Uh, basically, I'm in charge of handling any media inquiries, also our uh, social media, as well as reaching out for community outreach events, such as our Start Smart and Age Well classes. Uh, I'm just here to start joining these meetings and being involved. Well, we're glad to have you. Welcome, welcome to uh, El Sobrante. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Um, so um, we, we made a little bit of a change. Instead of uh, both Officer um, Lenway and I attending both of these meetings, we kind of split our responsibilities. Um, uh, in the past, the two of us were in charge of a number of different communities within the county, and we've kind of split it up. So I was given the role of uh, being in charge of all the West End counties, and then we gave uh, Officer Lenway the central county, uh, central uh, counties like Alamo and um, Pacheco and and um, and Bay Point. So I'm going to continue to uh, be attending these meetings, uh, and then Officer uh, Lane will also. Um, be joining us as well if there's any uh, inquiries as far as media related uh, um, uh, concerns. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, the, our calls for service. We we are basically on par for uh, for this past month. Uh, we had 14 traffic collisions in the El Sobrani area, uh, three of which res which resulted in DUI arrests. Uh, two of which were involving pedestrians, but there was no major injuries there. Uh, and three of which were hit and runs. The rest were just minor traffic collisions where property damage uh, was only, uh, there was only pro property damage. We had a number of parking complaints um, which were addressed accordingly. Um, some were closer to the um, Milton and Clark area. Uh, I believe I was able to, uh, to take care of all of those. And then we had a number of uh, parking complaints further down by Valley View and I also was able to um, take care of a few of those. Uh, we had five stolen vehicle reports uh, this month in the area, uh, three recovered stolen vehicles in the area. Uh, we had some complaints about uh, ah, dirt bikes. Uh, I think we spoke about this last month um, in the Milton Clark area. Uh, we got a number of uh, complaints about uh, somebody riding dirt bikes and ATVs in the area. Uh, there, were, there was a very small window where we got those complaints. Uh, some officers were sent out that way to uh, check the area out. Uh, we were not able to make contact with the uh, those riders, but I think just the uh, presence was enough to uh, quell that situation there. Um, and then going back to obviously speed, speed on Dam Road is continuing to be an issue. I've spent uh, almost all of my uh, free patrol time down in the um, down in the area down there and been writing citations. I did inquire about the radar trailer that we had out there several months back, what the status on that thing was. Apparently, the supply chain uh, breakdown has affected us in that sense. Uh, there are some parts that are required to fix the trailer that we can't get a hold of. So we're just in a holding pattern there. So until those parts come in, we're, we're not gonna see that radar trailer. I asked for an ETA on those and he couldn't give me one. Um, so I, I, for that, I guess we're just gonna have to wait. That's all I got. If anybody has any questions for me from the Mac or from the from everybody else there. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Officer Leviste. And 
I just want to say um, one of the things that I've always noticed and has just been bothering me a lot is the behavior of people on the freeway uh, on ramps, you know, when they enter the freeway and they just aren't paying any attention to the lights and cutting people off. I don't know if you've taken additional uh, measures, but it seems from my experience that in the last two months, that's gone way down. I don't know if there's... Yeah, um, when it was brought up um, several months back, we tried doing, I think the, the one that you spoke about last time was the El Portal on-ramp. Yes. Um, we tried to, yeah, we tried to do some enforcement there, but because of the layout, the way it, the way that that on ramp um, is 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 the, the top topography there, it made it hard for us to do some enforcement because we'd sit at the top and uh, you could see us from a mile away. So obviously at that point, nobody's going to do, nobody's going to try to run those metering lights. Uh, we we diverted our attention towards the um, the hilltop. Uh, metering lights, which is a little bit more conducive for us from an enforcement standpoint. It's it's sort of like a a, a blind corner, so we kind of sat sat in the blind area, and uh, we were able to write a, a number of uh, citations on that spot. Uh, when we first started doing it, I think we were making a stop pretty much every minute, uh, and that started to slow way down. So I think people the 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 usuals got got the picture that we were out there. So. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll occasionally go back out to those, um, metering lights and, and show our presence, but obviously we have to, there's only a small number of us. So we jump around, we, we spend again, most of our time, uh, on uh, damn road for speed. And then we'll occasionally go up to some of the problem areas like Hilltop and, and those metering lights. So it's still on our, it's still on our radar. Um, and, and we'll continue to, to monitor that uh, accordingly. Well, th thank you very much. Are there any Questions from the board for Officer Leviste. Yes, sir. Um, not a not a question, but building on what you just said, Officer Leviste. And of course, thank you to you and your colleagues for doing the work. But keep up on the hilltop, because I was there this morning on my one day into work in Oakland, and I was behind, you know, going on 80 westbound from Hilltop, um, and the blind curve, as you say. And there was a car that, uh, let's see. Oh, it ran the metering light, followed the car in front of it way too closely, and also had a had, had a busted uh, busted brake light, brake light out. So if someone had been there, you could have racked up a good a good old fine on that particular <laughs> driver for all of that nonsense. So yeah, please keep it up and the El Portal thing too, because every time, pretty much every single time that I am on that on ramp going up up, you know, eastbound. Every single time there is somebody that is running that because they have, they're either not paying attention, as you say, or they are very impatient. And there it's like, as if that extra five seconds they have to wait is going to impact their drive to wherever they're going. So just, you know, so thank you. So keep up, keep up the work on that. Keep, keep patrolling that if you can, because you know, people just, they need to be taught that the lights are there for a reason. It's not designed to, to annoy you, but it's designed to control the, the flow of traffic on what is already a very challenging uh, freeway to navigate. So thank you for the work. Okay. No, thank, thank you, Mr. Cleveland. Your, your, uh, your uh, statements are noted here. Thank and you. Please, please call in these future conversations. Please call me George, Mr. Cleveland. Uh, George. <laughs> Mr. Cleveland makes me feel really old. So oh, thank that's you. Okay. Uh, so are, are there further questions from the board? Yeah. I have a question well, for Officer Yeah, yeah. okay, so we'll go for the uh, other attendees. Uh, Sona, your question? Yeah, Officer Lavisti, thank you so much for the update. Um, and I wanted to ask you, it seems like we still have the problem. Um, are you noticing any different trend in um, speeding, like different locations, uh, some worse than others? The speeds themselves uh, as a whole within, I'd call it the last six months have come down, um, which is a good thing. It's the, the speeds are still high. Um, I'm still getting a number of, uh, majority of the citations I issued nowadays are more in the 50 mile an hour range. Whereas prior to that, we were up in the uh, upper 60s and 70s. So the speeds have definitely gotten down. And the contacts that I'm making more often than not 
uh, they're they're saying that yeah, you know what? I see you here all the time. I know you're out here. I, it just slipped my mind and and my speed got away from me. That's usually what the the conversation I have nowadays. So it's we're making an impact. We're definitely making an impact. Uh, our presence is known. Our present we're, we're we're they know we're out there. It's just that you know just just they just lose track of their speed. Uh, it seems like is what the what the, the common um, um, response is nowadays. So, so the, the speeds the are continuing. Go ahead. You said the number of citations are going down? No, no, no. The speeds themselves are going down. So in the past, um, I, I call it maybe six months or so ago, this I would routinely get 60 and 70 mile an hour speeds. Um, but nowadays, it, it, the majority of my citations are in the 50 mile an hour range. So the number of citations that are being issued uh, are probably about the same. I would imagine. I don't have the exact numbers, but the um, but the speeds at which I'm I'm um, I'm catching the, the the speeding violators are much lower than what they used to be. Call it five six months ago. So we are making an impact on that front, um, but obviously the speeds are still are still a little high. So I'm just going to continue yeah. to keep chipping away at it. I'm going to keep. Um, um, getting on my, my, um, partner officers. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Sorry. Um, recently I, in the past I was working swing shift, which would, I was primarily working in the afternoon to evening hours. I switched to day shift. So um, you'll probably be seeing me more often than not in the morning times. Now, this is an, this is a uh, working to our advantage because the morning crew didn't really have a West end, uh, officer who would routinely work out here. Uh, so now that I'm here in the mornings and I have direct contact with the, the um, officers that work in the afternoons, we we're spreading out our um, enforcement uh, out there on on Dam Road. So we're getting more. Uh, I, I'm out there more in the morning times and then I, I still talk on swing shift and we, we still have afternoon um, enforcement as well. So I think that'll be advantageous for all of us. OK, that's good. I'm still seeing a lot of. Um speeding near starbucks heading to 80 west um on the dam road like um close to um you know going towards san pablo like when uh, ah. some drivers enter the Rayleigh's plaza really fast and then they get their coffee and then they just want to like some are going 60 70 miles per hour and these are like uh, they must be local because i'm seeing the same cars and suvs doing it over and over uh, and tailgating okay. um, and almost getting into collision. Um, so some surveillance there, like, and I travel around uh, between 6.30 to 7. That's a very common, okay. that's like a hot spot. 6.30 in the morning or seven, or in the uh, evening? In the morning, 6.30, between 6.30 to 7, that's like the area. They just can't wait to get on the freeway. Okay, what I, with that information, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share that information with my um, with my colleagues in San Pablo PD. Everything west of uh, El Portal is San Pablo, so I'll share that that information that you just shared with me. I'll share it with my uh, my my uh, partner officers with the San Pablo Police Department. So hopefully no, they can. Um, maybe I didn't describe well. It's you know the Rayleigh's Plaza on the on the dam road on the left side. Um, that's the area that I meant. Um, drivers getting Starbucks in that plaza and then heading to 80 bus the, uh, on ramp. Right. Uh, if I may clarify, I think what yeah. Officer Loviste was saying, Sona, is that that's actually in San Pablo. I don't oh, know if that okay. makes a difference because it's not in El Sobrante. So Correct. Oh, okay. I see. So, yeah. So as far as enforcement in that, in that, that stretch of, uh, of Dam Road will be um, the responsibility of San Pablo PD. Okay, and is it still helpful for you to get emails or calls from us? No, please, please continue okay. to uh, to send the uh, the complaints uh, and concerns. That uh, again keeps the, the the focus on our area, so that way we can continue to to uh, send our resources out this way. Okay, thank you, and have great holidays. Okay, thank you. You too. Well, thanks for your questions, Sona. Are there any further questions from the attendees? Uh, for Officer Leviste, I have a question for him. Okay, Officer Leviste. Hey, thank you for all you do. And uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to put one more place on your map here in El Sobrante, Fire Station sure. 69. You guys are welcome to come and sit on our driveway anytime. We have vehicles that are 
and motorcycles that race up and down Apian Way all day long. And true story, just last tour, getting off work 7 a.m., look both ways, pull out, and I just happened to look in my rearview mirror, and there's a Suburban coming up on me. It had to be 70, 80 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. And I just, I just, the pucker factor was there. He went in the <laughs> center lane and passed me, but I, I thought for sure I was going to be hit. Yeah. But you're welcome to come. Noted. Say it anytime. Noted. Thank you very much. I, I'll take I'll take advantage of that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Are there any further questions for Officer Lebiste? Uh Mickey. Well, as long as I have you here, I thought I'd ask. Um, today I was driving on the 80, just past Pinal Valley Road, Road. It looked like there was a big accident that happened there. I was just curious what, what happened. Uh, <laughs> that was the reckless driver that uh, met his demise on his own accord. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, no, well, not. I'm sorry. Not. I, I don't. Want, I shouldn't have said met his demise, but it was a reckless driver that caused his own crash. I'll, I'll put it that way. Thankfully, so no one else was hurt. <laughs> Correct. So oh, that's good to hear. So, are there any further questions for Officer Lebiste? If I don't see any further questions, then Officer Lebiste again. Thank you and the other members of the Highway Patrol for doing everything you do to keep us safe. And thank you so much for your attention to our town. We really appreciate it. Have no, you're very time. welcome. Have a wonderful you're very welcome. Thank holiday. you very much and, and Merry Christmas. Thank yeah. you. Merry thank Christmas. You. So uh, we'll move on to our next speaker, and that's uh, Battalion Chief Thomas. Uh, Chief Thomas, why don't you go ahead and give us uh, an update? Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays. Um, information is kind of long. I'll try and be real short with it, but this is straight from Chief Bouchard. Um, the annexation update, everyone knows about that, the incoming of East Contra Costa. Uh, the annexation process is moving forward. We're ten tentatively planning for the sphere of influence change to be considered by LAFCO in January of 2022 and the annexation application to be considered at the LAFCO hearing is in February of 2022. We continue the ongoing planning process and have held two organization-wide webinars to keep all the members informed. Significant support from Measure X will assist in the fire station construction apparatus procurement and staffing for future needs of the annexation. EMS update. We continue working with LIMSA to gain permission to utilize basic life support ambulances and augmentation to advance life support units currently deployed. This would provide much needed additional transport capacity for our current delivery model which continues to be staffed due to a high call volume and staffing issues at the paramedic rank. And I think I'll talk about the uh, lateral transfer in a minute here of paramedics and the EMTs. Uh, APOT, APOT, Ambulance Patient Offload Time. The wait time for hospitals to take charge of the patient care at the emergency room. This is after we picked them up from their home or the street or wherever, and they're now at the hospital is at an all time high. This impacts the ability to make ambulances available for subsequent calls for service. So they're stuck on scene. In essence, the Alliance is supplementing hospital staffing with ambulance crews, thereby keeping them from responding to additional calls for service. The LIMSA Alliance and the Hospital Council recently met to discuss this problem. The Alliance requested a follow-up meeting with the hospital representatives to hear their resolutions for this ascending crisis. Fire prevention update, zone haven, evacuation zones, and I know this conversation came up in prior meetings. The evacuation zones are completed and online throughout the entire county. The presentation of the zone haven program will be scheduled for the board in January. Fire inspector recruitment and interviews will continue in December to fill uh, recent vacancies and 
you see I've gone on to another subject. Uh, we're continuing to, continuing to collaborate with the Contra Costa County Public Works and cities to identify evacuation routes that need fuel reduction utilize, utilizing our hand crew. Measure X funds to support our hand crew as a year round resource will ensure fuel reduction work will be maintained even during the winter months. All state mandated occupancy inspections are completed for 2021. The implementation of the new Fire Prevention Bureau Inspection and Records Management Program goes live December 2nd or went live December 2nd. This system replaces our current program that dates back to 2009 and will allow more efficient operations, less need for traditional forms and paper usage and allow for inspections to be completed in the field by a tablet. Almost done. Logistics update. Fire Station 86 in Bay Point. Construction is 55 days ahead of schedule. Construction in preparation for installation of a new fuel tank began at Fire Station 9 in Pacheco on December 1st. Engineer and Battalion Chief promotional tests were conducted in November. Planning for expansion and build out of our administration building in uh, North Concord is underway with an eye toward accommodating post annexation and staff additions. Recruitment continues with applications open for both logistics manager in the supply division, as well as a mechanic for the apparatus shop. And communications update. Recruitment is providing challenge, uh, recruitment is proving challenging with our recent fire communications manager recruitment producing just three qualified candidates of which only one was interviewed. I'm not sure why that happened. The district did not make a job offer. This recruitment will be reopened in January with hopes of increasing the candidate pool. Similarly, the district is still working to fill the vacant information systems technician to position. We're also working with County Human Resources on a new recruitment for fire dispatcher and with oral board interviews being conducted in early December. Those are going on now. The planning and design phase of the Fire Communication Center remodel continues with the architect and dispatch console designers working on initial console layout designs and, and options. And then last but not least, as we're getting to the last page here, the Google Workspace transition is nearing final completion with a few remaining issues to adjust and or correct. District information systems staff are assisting the East Contra Costa County Fire Protection District with their transition to Google in order to make communications more efficient during our, our pending annexation. And telecommunication staff are concluded, have concluded their trial project for wired LAN connections to all mobile data computers in emergency response vehicles. So that's a big improvement there. With good results, the entire fleet of emergency response vehicles will be switched over to wired land connections for their DC, MDCs in the next few months. And emergency operations update, we are able to reduce our wildland responses to non-peak fire season standards, at, which we did at the end of October. Crews remain busy with 13 working structure fires in the district in October, requiring a total of 190 fire crews, a slight increase over 2020. 10 of these fires occurred between the hours of midnight and 7 a.m. Staffing is still constrained by a increased number of personnel on long-term injury. Uh, that's injuries, that's COVID, um, different scenarios. This is having an impact on daily operations with the need to hold personnel for mandatory overtime shifts. You may think you're going home, but not today, not for another 24 hours. Interviews were conducted the week of November 30th for lateral firefighter paramedic and lateral firefighter to select candidates for Academy 57, which is scheduled for spring of 2022. Approximately 150 interviews were conducted to fill 30 spots in the Academy. And then last, last, training update. Academy 56 is going well. The recruits have entered week seven of their 19 week Academy. Recent training has focused on forcible entry, ladder evolutions, and the fire hose handling and manipulating training. 
And then Training and Safety Division is proud to welcome Fire Captain Tom Waller as their newly appointed 40-hour training captain. Tom comes from the division as a tenured fire captain. Tom Waller's area of focus will be continuing education development, hazardous materials, and annexation training. And I can personally say Tom was my captain here for over a year, and he's one of the most uh, uh, well-developed captains we have, and it was a gain for them and a loss for me. And that's the end of my report. I'm open for any questions, thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Chief Thomas. Are there any questions for uh, Chief Thomas from the SMAC board members? I have uh, just a quick question for you, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, thanks for this update, for the update regarding the uh, new training classes. How do you anticipate your staffing levels to be when kind of the next fire season rolls around, let's say compared to the previous one? Do you feel like you're more adequately staffed? Do you feel like you have more ground to make up? What's your general feeling around that? Uh, that's a good question. Um, with the increase of staffing from crew 12, which was moved from crew 12 to crew 24, they've been a big help with fires and with uh, um, placement of crews and equipment throughout the district. But, and also with the class 56 about to graduate and then class 57 coming up, um, those are all additions to the fire district and they'll help tremendously. The, the unknown factor is how many people may retire the end of this month or more commonly uh, the end of March. Can you tell us, just, I'll, I'll just follow up with one brief question. Can you tell us you know, about uh, further, quest, further uh, efforts you're making in terms of fle flexible dispatch of teams across the county to hotspots that flare up? Uh, you mean a pre-positioning, sir? Yeah, pre-positioning and things like that. Have you have you thought more about that? Are you still working on improving it? They're constantly working on that and uh, and and improving it. Uh, it's proved uh, very valuable um, with uh, noting the weather, when you know all those things, and the type of uh, the point in the season that we're in. We have been pre-staffing. Um, uh, equipment and personnel throughout the district, and especially in some of the hot spots as we go towards East, uh, Antioch, Pittsburgh, uh, East Concord, and they've proven very effective. Um, we've been able to have a quicker response because we have pre-positioned equipment and personnel. Okay, thank you. And I see that uh, Melinda has her hand up. Yes, ma'am. Thanks so much. That was a that was a that was a dense report. There was a lot of information in there. Yes. But somewhere along in there, I think I kind of heard that you're having a lot more fires in the middle of the night, midnight to 7 a.m. Did I hear that correctly? The like 10 out of 17 or something like that. The majority of the fires that we had came in from midnight to 7 a.m. Um, During was, the night shift, were those uh, fireworks related or were they, I mean, what are those related? I'm just curious about how you're getting more fires in the middle of the night. Um, most fires tend to be from, you know, now that we're in the winter seasons, most fires tend to be from cooking, heating, smoking, and then electrical items. Uh, yeah. fireworks, stupid human tricks. <laughs> I won't say stupid, <laughs> but most of the fireworks items have kind of tapered off, you know, yeah. especially now that we're getting into the cooler months, but now we have to really pay attention to and get the word out that to be extra safe, don't leave your cooking unattended. You know, we've had pots left on the stove while they ran to the store, things like that. Um, I just had a fire two days ago where uh, it was a heater just a little too close to the, the sofa. Um, you know, so um, cooking, heating, smoking, still the, uh, main reasons why fires start in the middle of the night. Got it. All right. Just curious. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And yes, thank you for everything. That was a great report. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So if there are no further questions from the board, uh, it looks like Angela Voto has her hand up. Angela? Um, yeah. Hi. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I was wondering if, um, if there's been any talk or uh, 
if any funding is going to be available for you guys to possibly do some fire breaks or um, vegetation management along the ridge line of the Elsa Brandy Hills ridge line that backs up to Pinole and um, maybe any work between Pinole, Richmond and Contra Costa Fire um, to possibly do some vegetation management along that ridge line. Yes, ma'am. Those are all on our radar. Um, I've made note, note of them as you were speaking and I will make sure they're in the plans, but every year we have a, a crew that goes out and surveys all the areas, um, everything from far east Brentwood and Oakley all the way out to San Pablo, Richmond, El Sobrante, um, including Rodeo, Hercules, and uh, they survey the lands and they make sure the fire trails are clear. They make sure the ridge lines uh, have breaks so that um, with our bulldozers and um, try and clear as much vegetation away from structures as possible and then the residents do their part as well. But all, all those things are in, in the planning as we move towards, as we move away from winter and into uh, wildland fire season. I also wanted to say thank you because um, recently you guys did do fuel management up in um, my area, which uh, honestly I've lived here almost 40 years, have never seen happen <laughs> from any county <laughs> workers. So I appreciate the work that was done and the crews did an amazing job with cleaning up and um, just uh, respecting the properties that they worked on. So I appreciate it and I wanna say thank you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. We're trying. We're, we're trying. <laughs> it's it's we don't want to repeat the season that we had a year ago and two years ago, um, two years ago. It was really bad. So, uh, Sona, you have a question. You're muted, Sona. Sona, you something's wrong with your microphone. Can no, you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Sorry, um, I just have a recommendation for um, Chief Thomas. Thank you for everything you're doing. I was wondering if um, if if it is possible to share those uh, winter fire incidents on Nextdoor, like other uh, departments give an update. If your department can post an update, I think it's important for people to learn from these uh, incidents because normally winter time, we don't think about fires. Um, like myself, a few days ago, I was uh, warming up frozen blueberries and my microwave started to spark and, and because the fruit was frozen. And uh, luckily I was watching it, so I, I turned it off. So I thought that was, I would, I would have never thought frozen fruit, uh, you know, risk for fire, microwave fire. So. Um, if it's possible, it would be nice to have those, um, you know, real incidents on next door. People can learn from. Oh, on next door. Okay, no, that's a good idea. Yes. Well, and thank you, Sona. That's I've never heard of the hazard from microwaving frozen fruits. So, I'll yeah, then, be sure uh, to pass that on to my family. <laughs> there was no yeah. aluminum foil. None. No, uh, I a week later, I was warming up some uh, leftover Burmese food and from my plate, one green bean got started to spark and I Googled certain vegetables have more minerals and I couldn't, I, I'm still shocked why wow. one got, so I'm like, I never, no one told me that a green bean can get on fire. So right. <laughs> funny, it happened. I was watching the microwave and I turned it off. But thank you. I'm glad you. you didn't leave it unattended. Thank you. I'm glad you're <laughs> safe. <laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, are there any uh, further questions from the attendees for Chief Thomas? If there are no further questions for Chief Thomas, uh, sir, thank you so much for all the work that you and the fire district do uh, to keep us safe and uh, have a, a wonderful and safe holiday season. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mac. Thank you, Mr. Lang. You guys have a very safe and happy holiday season as well. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, uh, Yes, normally the next uh, item in line would be a presentation uh, from Supervisor Joya's office by James Lyons, but uh, 
he had pressing matters that he needed to attend. So we'll pass that off and hopefully hear, hear something uh, next, next month. So in terms of discussion items, uh, development plan applications, et cetera, we don't have any development plans or notices of public hearings, et cetera, but we do have a task to uh, discuss the 2021 SMAC annual report and uh, SMAC members should have access to that. I reviewed it. I didn't see any issues, but I know that Nikki mentioned that she had some corrections and comments she wanted to make. So Mickey, you know, please tell us about them, but also whatever you have, send it in writing to James so he can amend the report. Uh, okay. The only thing really that I saw was that <clears throat> under, under major accomplishments, it said that the council staffed a booth at the El Sobrante stroll and passed out information on council meetings. Now, uh, there was no stroll this year except for the business going to businesses. So that's the only thing really there that I saw. Right. And right, there was nothing that I missed. I mean, it's like, yeah. There was no stroll this year, right? No stroll this year. We're uh, starting that's to. We're yeah, starting to work on it for next year. We don't know yeah. in the end whether we'll be able to do it. You know, the virus has a say in that and the county has a say in that. Yeah. But at the Chamber of Commerce, we're moving forward under the assumption that it's going to happen. And if we will it to happen, maybe it will. Okay, well, that's the only thing really, because it, it says that they did staff a booth there and. That's okay. not accurate. Well, that's a good, yeah. good catch. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, for the goals, I, I'm looking forward to making uh, under the continue to address the illegal dumping of trash in the El Sobrante Valley. I also would like to, you know, I'm hoping that we'll make more of an outreach to the community about littering to raise the consciousness. But um, I guess if we're going to address it, that'll be included in that. Um, I have lots of ideas about um, expanding uh, that issue here, but uh, I guess this isn't really that important. Yeah, so to, this is just a sort of a terse report on what happened last year. Okay. All right. And but please do keep thinking creatively about. Uh, next year because I feel like the effort that you spearheaded really has been one of the best things the Mac has, has done. So uh, it's really great. Keep going on it. As uh, long as there's litter, I'm going at it. <laughs> okay, looks like we've got a bunch of uh, comments from the board. We've got George and then Melinda. Yeah. Um, I, I will take into consideration your idea to send things to James to update, but I want to put it out here verbally so it's on the record under the recording. Uh, other speakers and topics, um, you could kind of put a sub bullet point for under uh, for my East Bay Mud because they came and there was a whole group of them, including Clifford uh, Chan, the general manager. So, and he was here. I remember that because we talked about things and one of the attendees asked why the why her water bill was as, as it was. And so that's where I got to explain. Um, other speakers and topics, we have the deputy health officer, Dr. Sviali, but also Dr. Farnitano came and, and presented to us as well. Um, we also had uh, Joy, Supervisor Joy himself attended a number of meetings that I think he talked and pre presented when Dr. Farnatano was here. So that should be added as well. Um, we, we had also about, you know, the El Sobrani Community Creek Community Park. I probably bungled that title. But so Hala Bana came to a meeting and told us how, what we were trying to do to get that park up and running. And that's... Oh, and in the speakers and topics under the, the, the bullet that is labeled presentation, uh, she's on the call with us and her first name is Sona, or she was on the call, not Sony. So there, there was that. So that's just a typo. Um, and that's all I got. 
George, those are a lot of great catches. I'm glad that, uh, you know, the, that's been recorded now, and I'm sure James will uh, take note of it. Actually, I mean, a lot of good information and a lot of good speakers. So actually about that. So do we still have to email him this information? Because this is a recording. I'm assuming he's going to listen to it or something. Well, I have a feeling like, you know, what you said will be pretty self-evident from the recording, but okay, perhaps cool. there may be some more details that Mickey has that might be better in writing, in my thought. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm done. Uh, Melinda? Well, I was just going to echo what George just said. There, it felt like there were a lot of things missing, and um, and then the and but I will email him because it's just a whole lot easier for James if we give him, give it to him in writing. And I just want to say that you know um, what Mickey and her team did and all of that is just amazing, and that needs to be trumpeted a little more. So that I I too will be sending him an email. Um, just, uh, I, I felt like we did a lot better. And I also have the perspective of, and I'm, I don't know how he's gonna say this or if this even belongs in this report, but um, there have been, um, one of my church members is chair of a different MAC. And I've also heard from uh, various county employees that this is one of the best attended MACs um, in the whole county. And I think we should say that, that we have an engaged, citizenry that are busy and really getting engaged so but i'll send all that to james okay thank you melinda and uh again thank you for catching all that you know all those uh things that we could be included in the uh in the annual report because i really suspect that perhaps that might result in more county attention and maybe even more funding to our town if we show that we have this engaged citizenry. So yeah, th th thank both of you and thank you, Mickey. Are there any uh, comments in general regarding the annual report? Um, if not, in that case, we're done with the discussion items and we, oh, Mickey, go ahead. You need to unmute. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, I was just wondering, in the report was a, an attendance record here. And I was wondering, you know, like a couple of the people, well, really, I don't know it, it, how engaged like our, our alternates are at this point. And, you know, cause it looks like they're absent, you know, a lot, a lot you know, and, I don't know if um, if they should be contacted and reminded, or is there, um, or do they not really want to be on this this council? In which case, maybe we should open up the the seats to other people who might want to to participate. Yeah, it, it's a good thought. I think it would be you know for something like that, it would be a good idea to frame your thought in an email and just send it directly to James and just, you know, copy it to maybe one other Mac member. I guess if you copy it to two, that sort of uh, mm. gets, it starts to impact, is it the Brown Act? I always forget, is it, yeah, <laughs> public notice of meetings. So you have to be careful about the emails. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, if I may, I think it might just be something as simple as a reminder, um, because if you look at the attendance, you know, the alternates aren't there, but there are some folks who don't show up as often as others. So, and one of those has been like that for, well, since I was on, on the Mac the, for my first time around. So, you know, maybe it, it's something to bring up to James and, you know, to say we've got some issues with alternates and have some issues with the full members. And we even had a month where we didn't have a quorum, which is kind of 
Well, with seven, with a full back and two alternates, nine people, we should be able to get four people in a meeting, you know, for a quorum. So, so I think that's, it's an, it's an important point. And, uh, you know, especially because I think as, as has been pointed out, there are a lot of people in the community who want to be part of this. I know that when applications to be part of the SMAC go out, there are always candidates. And uh, if somebody is on it and isn't participating, then maybe there's a chance for somebody else who wants to be part of the community to step in. Uh, Melinda, you had a question? Um, yeah, it's not really a question so much as it is a comment that um, um, I, I agree that this is an important issue and we need to draw it to attention, but not just to James, I would suggest you know, because uh, you're right, if we if we do a group email, then we really kind of have to take a vote and send it as a group <laughs> for the brownout. But Mickey, if you're going to send something to James about this, um, I would copy John. Because John ultimately makes these appointments. And so I think John needs to be copied on this particular kind of thing. And I personally would be happy for Mickey to be the person who raises that. Um, but I also agree with you that you know, there, it's really embarrassing that we had a meeting without a quorum when there were like 25 people in the meeting <laughs> and, and we couldn't field enough people for a quorum. So, you know, I think we have a lot of people who would show up and maybe we have to invite people to consider their participation. Um, and John needs to think about that because I, I ultimately it's going to be John, not James. And it's kind of good, I think, to copy James and John on something like this. Yes, good point. So if there are no further, uh, if there's no further discussion about the uh, annual report, I know that uh, some folks had, we can now go to public comment. And I know that uh, Will, you had some discussion points about the San Pablo Dam Road project. So maybe we can start with you, Will. Okay. All right. Am I on? You're on. All right. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to um, suggest to the, the MAC that you might want to, uh, that it would be um, beneficial to have a, an agenda item potentially for the next meeting on an update from the county on the San Pablo, they call it the San Pablo Dam Road Road Diet Study. The study started two years ago and they're trying to think of ways to improve the dam road. And um, we had our first meeting. So I learned of the study group, which is kind of a preliminary before going to public meetings and so on. It was almost two years ago. And you know, then the pandemic came along and um, we had a meeting a year ago, the first meeting. And at that meeting, they had already put together kind of a decision, I would say almost, and made a presentation, which those of us who were um, more, I say community minded, kind of objected to because they basically said, can't really change anything on the dam road, there's too much traffic. Uh, so we had a lot of discussion and uh, they agreed to, go look at that and revise the report and consider things. And that took you know, many months before we had the next meeting. That was in last July. And we again objected because there wasn't much change. And the consultant group that had put together the, the study uh, agreed they were gonna revise it. Now we're still waiting for the revision since, uh, well, it's been over four months. And they're, they're saying they're going to move ahead, but I kind of feel like it's really on a back burner. And I think it's a, an important issue. And it's had a lot of people upset, the condition of the damn road. Um, and I think there's a great potential for real improvement. But then this has to start moving because uh, this is still a preliminary stage. And once we get through that, then they're talking about having you know a series of public meetings. And I'm, I'm sure coming to the MAC at that point too. But it's just uh, dragging out and I'd like to kind of see if it could get moving. And I think your interest might help. Um, so so my... I think that's a great idea. Let's make sure that it gets top billing as an agenda item for the next meeting. Okay. 
And, you know, I think we can also ask, pose some inquiries, you know, maybe a pointed inquiry to the supervisor's office, you know, like, when are we going to get this follow up report? Yeah, that's, I'm yeah. using email regularly, but yeah, not getting a lot of response. Well, maybe, you know, more of us can do yeah, that. That would help. Just send me, I, I'd be willing to uh, frame an email. If you could send me an email and just maybe bullet out some points you might want me to list. Yeah. I and this goes for anybody else who would want to send something similar. I think the more pressure that goes on, the more chance of resolution of this we get. Yeah. So, okay, uh, well, that sounds good. I, I will send you, I, I wrote a summary to everyone in the county, kind of like, this is what's happened. This is how long it's taking. This is what, you know, should have, maybe we agreed would happen when I'll send that to you. Um, okay, that's great. And, uh, you know, I think like anybody who want, what we can do, uh, Will, is have anybody who wants to participate in this just send you a chat message now and with their emails and then you could perhaps send those bullet points to them so that that would you know okay. get it have the chance of multiple people directing questions at the uh, county sure okay sona you had a question about that does that address uh, address your question about to who. Yes, you I just didn't know Bill had this update. Um, so, Bill, will you be willing to update our San Pablo Dam Road Safety Group? Or um, because I, I didn't know a lot. Yeah, it's not a lot to know because not a lot has happened. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're still sending out emails. I don't know if I've seen any meetings lately. Have you met lately? No, we haven't been meeting lately for the same reason because there is no update. But so what I do is whatever I heard from Officer Leviste, I usually just update everyone, you know, number of citations, whatever. And then uh, and then earlier I heard send an email. Um, email to who? Is that something for us to do or for, for only you? So, Sona, what I had just suggested is that we'll send me and whoever else is interested a list of bullets that could go in an email to let's say John Joya, copy to James, you know, asking about when this report is going to, you know, be ready. And so at least it sort of documents that a lot of people are really interested in moving forward on this. Okay, good plan. Thank you so much. Thanks, Will. Yeah, and I, I you know, just send out the email when you're going to be meeting and, uh, you know, I'll be happy to come and update everybody in your yeah, group. Maybe it is time to schedule a meeting. I'll, I'll work with Doug. We can figure out a good date and time. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Sona. George, you have your hand up. I do. I'm, I'm sorry. I was hoping we could go back to the year end report. It's very brief because I kind of have to ask a question of one of the other attendees. Uh, Harry, you, you come to our meetings regularly. We thank you. I can't remember, though. Did you in any past meetings give a West County wastewater presentation to us at all? No, okay, just checking, just wanna make sure. Thank you, that's all. Harry, I think you're gonna be on the agenda. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tremendous oversight, wow. I mean, I see Harry at the Chamber of Commerce too, so I'm the first one who should have thought of that. So uh, I'll bring, let's, let's bring that up as an agenda item, you giving a, so people learn more about what you're doing. Sorry for making more work for you, Harry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Also, we uh, we have a newsletter and um, a website that is now full, chock a block full <clears throat> of information about West County wastewater. And um, so, I recommend uh, looking at that um, regularly because we do have plenty of articles about what to put into the toilet and what not to put into the toilet and um also other uh interesting um items and we're going through a huge uh, uh spending uh and update and upgrade of all of our sewers 
and our plant. And that would be interesting to read about as well. Yeah, so it's a lot of money, taxpayer money, and it's good to know how it's spent. I mean, it's important money too. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely uh, going to improve um, all of our infrastructure uh, rather rapidly. And, and also save money producing our own energy and um, creating um, fertilizer uh, as a byproduct of our processes. So all good stuff. Good. Thank you. So uh, if there are no further, are there any further um, public comment items, new public comment items? If there are no new public comment items, uh, I think what we can do is sort of group 10.1 and 11.1 .1 on the agenda, information items and subcommittee reports. Are there any information reports by MAC members? If not, we can move to you know, anything that additional you want to say about the dumping, illegal dumping subcommittee meeting, uh, Mickey. Thank you. I, yeah. I, um, well, we had an, we're having our monthly uh, uh, group cleanups now. We, we've established that we're going to be meeting at the library um, on the third Saturday of each month at uh, ten o'clock as our as our meeting point, and we'll loan out equipment and send people to different locations uh, with that. So we're grateful to the library for their support with that, but we're still looking for a good way to dispose of the items that we pick up. It's been kind of a problem that, uh, that we don't have access to a, a dumpster, which we would really appreciate having because when we do these cleanups, we end up having to just kind of leave them on the, find a location on the side of the road where either where we cleaned up, which is kind of okay if there's already big items there that we can just add to. But it's been a little bit of, a, of an issue that uh, we need to find some kind of resolution because at times people have brought their stuff back to the library and then, then they had to uh, bring the bag somewhere else and dump it somewhere uh, that we agreed with the county public works to do. But anyway, we had, a, we had an excellent meeting with uh, John Joya and uh, Republic Services and, uh, and the county public works. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited that we're kind of getting a little bit more coordinated and have their attention. And I invite everybody to come next Monday because we're gonna have our guest speaker pre presenter is going to be Sean Moberg, who represents Republic Services. And he can tell everybody about the services that are already available that people might not know about and that they should get uh, informed about. And we're, we're trying to increase the public education around what is it that people can do with all their junk instead of dumping it on the streets and different things like that. Anyway, Sean Moberg is going to be joining us at the meeting on Monday, and he, he's there to answer any questions aside from letting us know what services are already available there. So if people have questions about uh, what it is we're entitled to as customers, but uh, there is an issue with um, with I think the apartment dwellers that are kind of left, they don't they don't have as much access to some of the services that that the that the single family home units get when they when they sign up with Republic. But we're going to try to work on that. And um, I don't know. I'd like to to introduce my husband Chris Conrad, who's been who revamped. Recently, the, the website, Keep El Sobrante Beautiful info, and it's really turning out to be a nice resource that I hope that will get more attention to. And John Joya said he would help us to advertise more about uh, and to help us raise the awareness about this. But 
maybe Chris can talk about that for just a minute. And also Harry, um, when I heard you talking about things not to throw in the in the toilet, that would be like an apropos kind of thing that we can add to our website too. And if other people, and even set the safety issues, because we also have um, uh, Sohela's um, 94803 Emergency Preparedness Alliance. They have a page on, on the website and also the Triangle District uh, group has one there and we invite it to others that have that might have a project going if you want to have a page where people can kind of go to and see what they uh, see how they can get answers to all kinds of questions about keeping El Sobrante clean beautiful and safe as well so Chris did you want to add anything um, yeah uh, thanks Mick and thanks for all the uh, kudos that people have been giving to our project because I, I feel like it's, it's turned out to be pretty good we're bringing a lot of interest from people one of the things that's uh, a little bit of a, a problem for us though is like we have we're coordinating with different groups um, including uh, uh, adopt a road uh, the uh, El Bronte heroes and uh, it's, it just gets a little discouraging for people when we like do a cleanup and then the material winds up sitting there for a long time uh, oftentimes being attacked by animals or home, uh, or I don't know if that would say unhoused people, but some people are getting to a lot of these uh, collections before they get picked up. And so um, I, I don't know if we need to like coordinate our dates. One of the problems is that people are free to do the cleanups on the weekends and that's when they don't do the pickups. Uh, so there's gonna be automatically a day or two that's gonna be a lag. And then uh, the, if they don't pick it up immediately, then uh, it, it takes even longer. So I don't know how we're going to be able to reconcile those, but that, that is a little bit of an issue. Another thing we've been doing uh, that Mickey did not mention, and, and <clears throat> we haven't been able to do very much of it yet, but we're hoping to do more of it, is uh, putting leaflets onto vehicles where there's a lot of dumping or uh, getting uh, letters into apartments where there's those particular amounts of dumping, just so the people there know that, hey, by the way, you know, uh, you're not in a vacuum out here. Uh, people are noticing that you've got a mess here on your, on your hands and so forth. And uh, we're talking about getting a little bit more of a uh, work with code enforcement and health enforcement, in fact, to, uh, for the particularly problem areas. But we, we feel like what we're going to do first is to encourage people to do the right thing before we start going to stronger pressure on them. And that brings me uh, back to the website, which is I, if, if people could take a look at it, I put the uh, link in there. Um, and so uh, one of the things we've done is that we, we uh, have a, a pretty nice little calendar there. We have links to other groups. We have um, uh, a video that's up there about our, our, our cleanup. Uh, but on the right-hand side, what, one of the things we've been trying to encourage people about is to use the 1-800-NO-DUMPING or the uh, mobile citizen app to report because that way uh, you don't need to figure out where you are. That's another thing we've run into is that, that question about which where is the... Uh, El Sobrante, where's the county, where is it Richmond, where is it San Pablo, and so people, uh, we've had cleanup where we end up with the, putting the pile in the wrong uh, jurisdiction and things, so forth, so trying to get that all worked out uh, seems like something we want to do, uh, and another thing that I have is a question that maybe people can answer here, I was actually hoping that uh, James would be here to answer it, <clears throat> which is that, you know, considering that we, we're engaging with different groups um, uh, and uh, parts of the town are in the county and parts that are in Richmond City and, and so forth, is, is that people, someone suggested that we should have on, on our uh, uh, Keep Elsa Ronte Beautiful website, uh, the logos of the different uh, munis, uh, jurisdictions. Uh, I'm afraid that that made me seem like we're being endorsed or sponsored by them or something like that. So I, I just wondering about the validity of doing that. I, I kind of understand why people want to see the Richmond seal to, you know, because they live in Richmond and so forth, uh, or the uh, Contra Costa County seal. But at the same time, I, I also, uh, one of the things we're trying to do is keep enough separation from the ES MAC that we don't create uh, liability or issues for the MAC. Uh, in the course of doing the things that we're doing. And so um, I was going to, maybe somebody here knows about whether, what the rules are in terms of using any, uh, I don't think the ES Mac has its own logo, does it? Uh, I'm not aware of any logo. Maybe that's another uh, S Mac project. 
Yeah, actually, we could have a competition for something like that. I think it'd be really good. And it falls in with our idea of beautification. And uh, the other thing we're talking about is uh, to, to bring more pride in the community is to get the signage at the uh, beginning, at the entrance of town and so forth. Now, one of the things that's happened now is that somebody has taken it off on their own and working with um, the Rotary Club, I think it is, making yeah, it happen. It's the, the Chamber of Commerce, I think. Yeah, so that's, being, that's, that's an active Chamber of Commerce project. Yeah. And so that's underway. I think you'll you'll see something that's very nice. Yeah. Uh, well, right now there's a, bit, a big controversy about what colors. So <laughs> just saying that maybe a competition or something, if, or if there's going to be a permit thing, that might be a way to go where we can have input, but without having uh, quite as much fighting about the details as like what we've had happening, on, at least on one list that I was watching you know, the other day. Right. And I guess I'll just wrap up with that. If people could come to the website, uh, provide other suggestions for links. I think it's becoming really useful, but um, one of the things that uh, we need to kind of do with it is to get it out there on social media so people know how to get to it. And this kind of brings me to Melinda is that, you know, if we, we have the Bright uh, Triangle Beautification Group as part of the uh, team and they have a, a spot on the website and so forth. If there's anybody over there, uh, if any of you or anybody involved with that would like to do any blogging or anything like that, and I can offer this to other people on the ESMAC as well, uh, you know, we could have host blogs. And then what's good about that is you have this thing you want to say, you, you put it onto the website, and then when you post it, you post the link. That way you get to get what you say out there. You can send it to a lot of different links at once instead of having to do one by one. And uh, it brings people back to the website. And so I, I just want to suggest that maybe the good table as you move along or some of your other projects over the triangle, um, you might want to like take advantage of that, Melinda. And, or if you have anything else to say about the triangle. I'm not, project. I'm not, I'm act actually, I'm not exactly sure what you're saying. I'm, I'm not really part of the triangle group exactly. Um, I'm really trying to get this project finished. I don't have time for that. Um, <laughs> Okay. I, well, okay, I really don't. I mean, I got it. It's going to rain on Sunday, and I have to get a roof on the nursery in the next two days. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, to be real truthful, um, so I'm not sure exactly what you're asking for. We have a big website ourselves. We do a weekly blog. We have a newsletter. Now, if you guys wanted to give me things to run in my newsletter once a month, I'd be happy to do oh. that, and we can okay. certainly do things like that. Um, but um, so, well, that's good enough, Melinda. I understand your hands are yeah, and, we just, Anything to I, I collaborate with each other, promote each other. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally happy to do that. And if you guys want to send me short pieces, that'd be great. Um, sometimes people do ask me, um, you know, to put out various emails for various things. We can send five emails a month or they charge us more. So we just send out our blog, but we're happy to have guest bloggers and we're happy to have stuff in our newsletter but we don't you know we're not an e-list where we send out blast after blast after blast we send out five emails a month which i think is useful people like that they don't get it we don't we don't invade people's mailboxes much so anyway yeah. that's neither here nor there but we can work on that offline yeah melinda you know you could also send us any calendar items like when you have your group cleanups and things or work days and things like that we could add that to our calendar well, it's it's every last saturday except in december and january because um, okay. december and january are problematic okay so. okay so so just to wrap up on on this yeah, and and sure. we'll talk more and get more input i'm i'm looking forward to this meeting next monday um, the next group cleanup is December 18th. And then, uh, then after that in January 15th is, uh, the national day of service. And that's a good day for it. It just so happens to fall on the third, I mean, the third Saturday of the month. So we're going to take advantage of that and try to, to get people involved and, in, and, you know, doing their part in honor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, the National Day of Service. So um, anyway, those three dates, December 13th meeting, December 18th cleanup, January 15th, the next National Day of Service. So, okay. so we'll talk more on Monday. Thank you, Mickey. And uh, I, I hope the meeting's well attended. It looks like uh, Cheryl has her hand up. Hi. Cheryl. Hi, thanks. Um, 
yeah, it, uh, Harry mentioned it earlier. Um, I'm actually the the president of the board of directors of West County Wastewater. So Harry and I are on there together. And one of the things that was just mentioned was talking about, you know, when you talk about these day of service and you talk about the things that you're trying to do, especially environmentally and things like this. I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, I mean, I sit at these meetings, I usually are very quiet, I just listen. And it's not shared. I, I live up here in Elsa Burning Hills and it's just not shared with the community. The community knows nothing about a lot of these things unless we tell them. So if it's not, if, if, if it's one thing to say, I can put this in my newsletter. And what I just heard is a great back and forth saying, well, you give me the information and I'll cross share it. And then it was kind of like, well, no, you give it to me. <laughs> so I was just confused. <laughs> who's gonna give what information to whom and who's gonna give it out? And I just think that the more information that's shared, the more links that share, the more whoever, if you cross share it, then everybody in this area can know that this information is happening. The day of service is an absolute wonderful day that most of us uh, are looking for. There's Dianza, there's elementary schools, Valley View, Orlinda. They are always begging and asking, what can I do this day? There's parents asking, there's parents groups asking, the Boys and Girls Club is asking, what can I do on this day? And so there's no shortage of people looking for something to do in this area. So I just think that the more we can cross share information, um, the better it is. Uh, Harry has given you information. I know that he sees most of you guys. Uh, he's our representative from the board here and the, the chamber. Um, so he knows how to, you know how to get a hold of him. We can we can publish some of this information even through West County, or he announces it. So I think it's cross cross sharing within our very very small community here. Um, yeah, we are not Richmond, and even the people who live in quote unquote Richmond live in that very sliver of Richmond, uh, in the flatland or or going towards the hills. We can do better in, in keeping El Sobrante beautiful and, and doing what we have to do for our communities. So I would like to see more of that. So I usually try not to speak, but I feel like it, sometimes, you know, uh, we, we, need to, we need to do better at sharing information amongst ourselves. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for raising the point and uh, never hesitate to speak at our meetings. Yeah, I, I would just like to say that that has been our biggest challenge is the outreach and because there's so many different entities and, and how do we get it all there out there. And that, I know that Supervisor Joya has offered to include more things in, in his newsletters that he sends out in his e-newsletters, e I guess. Um, we were trying to get... Uh, you know, also Republic services to do actually general mailings, you know, to let people know what what they can do. But we'll see if we can get that. But I, I agree. Yeah, we need some, we need more coordination, some way of like making this outreach to all these different entities that are looking for things to do. So, so to thank you. That's been a great discussion about the illegal dumping subcommittee. So we'll wait to We'll look forward to seeing people at the meeting on Monday night. And uh, I think with that, um, we can go to the sort of the final topic, which is, which is agenda items. And I think we've got, we should have a presentation by Harry. We should see if we can get a presentation on the, um, on the San Pablo Dam Road project. And I would like to see a COVID update because uh, you know we we've had this uh, the introduction of the vaccine boosters and this uh, new variant that we don't seem to know a heck of a lot about, and so it would be good to get one of the county health officials to kind of get us a summary of what's going on from their point of view. So. Um, those are three agenda items that 
that occur to me just right off the, the top of my head. If anybody wants to add any additional ones, that would be great. Okay, I think everybody's tired. <laughs> so uh, it's been a well attended oh. meeting. Oh, Mickey. Please. Yeah, there's one, one quick thing that if you don't know, you know, it, it, it's a different Zoom link for the meeting coming up on Monday. So if you're not, uh, if you want to get the Zoom link, I think you have to email uh, uh, James Lyon and he'll add you to the list or, or send it to me at info at info, And I have my own list going too, and I'll send that out. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I am, I've never recorded a Zoom meeting. I'm hoping that when the meeting ends and I press stop recording and all that, it's going to save the file. <laughs> so I would appreciate your- It program. will, and it'll ask you whether or not to save it to the computer or the cloud. Did James give you an, an idea of which way? No, no, I, I think- Well, if, 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 if save it to I the cloud is a choice, it. I would probably do that because that's probably going to get to James that way. Okay, well, I think I opted to save it to my computer. So uh, good, then you'll get to send it to James. <laughs> yeah, I don't think five gigabytes will fit in an email, but we'll figure something out. Okay, so uh, prayers that this recording file can actually be saved. And I thank everybody for participating and making this a lively and productive meeting. So thank you all and have a wonderful December. See you in January. Yeah, see you next year. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Happy holidays.